Welcome to this video on fiber optic communication. In this video, we will have a brief overview of fabrication of an optical fiber. I am Dr. M. Sumati, Professor of Electronics and Communication Engineering. This picture gives a basic structure of an optical fiber. For a glass fiber, the core and cladding are made of glass and the either or both the core and cladding are doped with dopants such that the refractive index of the core is greater than that of the cladding. And then it is coated by an elastic abrasion resistant material which provides protection from external environmental and mechanical stresses. Over that is a strengthening fiber such as Kevlar which increases the strength, the tensile strength of the material and a cable jacket which provides mechanical strength and also the color code of which determines the type of fiber yellow for single mode fiber, orange for multi mode fiber and blue for polarization maintaining fibers. Silica or glass SiO2 is used for manufacturing of glass fibers. The refractive index of silica is 1.458 at 850 nanometers. So to the silica dopants are added to vary the refractive index indexes as required. And while choosing the dopants some of the properties that should be taken care of is ease of availability and availability in pure form and properties similar and that match with the silica and also ease of li to liquefy and vertify. So some of the popular dopants that are used as indicated here and their refractive indices for various concentrations is indicated. Germanium dioxide and phosphorus pentoxide they increase the refractive index above that of pure silica and boron trioxide and fluorine they decrease the refractive index below that of pure silica. So depending on whether the dopant is going to be added for the core or the cladding the material can be chosen and their concentration can be chosen. So this table gives the popular combinations that are used. If the cladding is going to be pure silica then the core should have a higher refractive index. So germanium dioxide or phosphorus pentoxide is used as a dopant. When silica is used for core then the cladding should have a lesser refractive index and boron trioxide is used. So these are the common, co common combinations that are used for fiber manufacture. The fiber fabrication techniques there are two types one is the direct melt method other vapor phase oxidation method. Direct melt method is a traditional method. When glass is heated it withstands heat to a, up to large temperatures. At very high temperatures the glass softens and then it turns into a viscous liquid. So in direct melt method from the molted, molten form of glass the fiber is drawn directly. Vapor phase oxidation method is the popularly used method these days. So here the reactants are made to react in the vapor form and therefore the purity of the glass fiber that is manufactured is high and the attenuation in the fiber is less. The various steps to manufacture an optical fiber are fabrication of the preform, drawing the fiber from the preform and coating and jacketing processes. The first the uh, pure vapor form of the metal halides like silicon chloride or germanium chloride are made to uh, react with oxygen that is they are oxidized to form the respective oxides like example silicon oxide or germanium oxide and these form oh, powder white powder which are then sintered to form the preforms. Preforms are nothing but glass rods or tubes. So once the preforms are formed Fiber, they are, the tip of the preform is heated and fibers are drawn from that and to this fiber a coating is done to protect the fiber. So we look into the detailed steps. So the chemical reactions for fabrication of preformer, the respective metal halides are oxidized to form the oxides as shown by the different reactions for the different material. The materials can be chosen whether the dopant is going to be added for the uh, core or the cladding and the concentration that is required. So the different methods for fabrication of preform are 
chemical vapor deposition method, modified chemical vapor deposition, plasma modified chemical vapor deposition and up to vapor phase axial deposition method. So, among these we will look into two of the methods. One is modified chemical vapor deposition method. Here it consists of a pure silica tube which rotates. So, into this revolving silica tube the reactants that is the metal halides and oxygen is pumped in. So, on reaction they form the oxides which forms a suit which gets deposited on the uh, silica tube inside of the silica tube which is rotating. And this uh, suit is sintered by the oxy hydrogen flame that moves to and fro. And when the sufficient thickness of the glass is formed, this entire set is collapsed that is heated to high temperature and collapsed into a preform. The inner part of the preform has the glass with the uh, dopant which forms the core and the silica tube which is pure silica tube forms the cladding and from this the fiber can be drawn. In the case of vapor phase axial deposition method, this is a lateral deposition method. Here a seed silica rod is used and to the tip of the silica rod one end the material is oxide is uh, deposited and as it is deposited the rod is pulled upward so that it forms a porous glass preform and if this rod also rotates horizontally so that uniform cylindrical deposition happens. As the rod is pulled upward it is heated in a zone so that this preform becomes a solid transparent glass preform which is later used for drawing of the fiber. So, this setup gives how the drawing of a fiber from the preform. The preform that has been manufactured in the previous uh, steps is fixed to one end and the other end is heated by a furnace. This heating causes the tip of the preform to uh, soften up and from this a fiber is drawn. The tractor drum over which the fiber is kept, the rotation speed of the drum determines the diameter of the fiber and this has to be rotated at a constant speed to maintain a uniform diameter. So, um, uh, the diameter of the fiber is measured and a closed loop method is used so that the uh, fiber diameter is monitored and maintained at a constant value. So, as soon as the fiber is uh, drawn, it is coated with an elastic material to protect the fiber from environmental pollution like water vapors and dust. And so, the fiber that is drawn is taken up and later on it is cabled. There are different methods for cabling uh, the fiber, different configurations are available based on the requirement and where the fiber is cable is going to be used, whether it is inside buildings or underground uh, ducts or under sea or overhead cables. So, depending on where it is being applied, the cabling takes place. So, this video briefly discussed about the fabrication method for optical fiber. Thank you.